people. Amen. Introduction. During three centuries following the death of Joshua, Israel history followed its cycle, repeated over and over again. The people fell into apostasy and came under the domination of a pagan nation until the people cried to God and he sent deliverers or judges to free them. They then served the Lord for a time before again apostatizing, starting the cycle again. Among Israel's judges were an array of men and one woman. These included Othanel, Ehud, Shanga, Deborah, Barak, Gideon, Abimelech, though many were not including Tola, Jah, Zephthah, Isdan, Elon, Abdon, and Samson. Samson could also be considered one of the judges of Israel. These individuals were not so much judges charged with settling disputes as they were deliverers or saviors appointed by God to deal with oppression by Israel's enemies. Joshua died when he was 110 years old. After he and his generation passed off the scene, another generation rose up that was not in close communication, communion with the Lord and what he had done for Israel. Our text for this lesson deals with the institution of the judges. It is a general description of how God used them to help Israel. Amen. Wow. Praise God. Praise God. Our topic again, a backsliding people. At this time, we are going to page 98, the heart of the lesson. Amen. Imagine trying to drive on a busy, mad road without any traffic laws. You might encounter a truck coming head on and refusing to stop, or a car going 90 miles an hour. Traffic signals would be non-existent, since no one would obey them anyway. There would be accidents all over the place. Another word for the kind of situation might be anarchy. Anarchy means a state of lawlessness. Anarchy could be a good term to describe the time after Joshua died. Too often the people of Israel lived as they wanted instead of following God's laws. The result was oppression from their enemies. God chose to raise up judges to lead his people. Amen. Here we find centuries after Joshua had passed on that Israel was still faced with serving God or not. Joshua made it clear. He said, as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. Amen. That is a decision every individual must make for themselves. Not what your parents did, not what your grandparents did or didn't do, not what your children are doing or not are doing. Amen. Not what your siblings are doing or not doing. Family, friends, co-workers. This is an individual thing that you must make a decision. Am I making Jesus my choice. If I'm making Jesus my choice, 
then there's a transformation that comes with that. Jesus transformed our lives, our minds, our character as we fall in love with him, as we learn of him, as we spend time with him and stuff with him and his presence, bathe in his presence, amen. Receiving the voice of God, the word of God, the things that pertain to God, amen, praise God. Being amongst those who are separated unto God, being amongst those who are sanctified. Sanctified means to be separated unto God. As we thirst after the things of God, like you thirst after water, praise God. God fills. He fills that thirst with only the supply of that living water that comes from him can fulfill. Amen. Our soul cries out for fulfillment, a nourishment, the bread of life, praise God. Amen. The presence of God. Amen. Whether we are a believer or unbeliever, it's a part of us that yearns to have a walk with God. Amen. But when we have been transformed, by accepting Jesus Christ, there's a constant conviction by the Holy Spirit, amen, as we walk in the journey, amen, amen. It's like falling in love with an individual, praise God. You go deeper and deeper, you learn of them, you spend time with them, praise God. You want to do things that please them. Well, Israel, God selected from the seeds of Abraham to be a voice in the earth, to be a light in the earth, to point the way, praise God. Many of us uh, had came from a family that had more than one child, but our oldest daughter or the oldest son did a lot of times point the way. Sometimes they were like, and not in every case, but in most cases, they were like the second parent. Amen. They kept us in line. Don't do that. Don't go there. You know mom wants you back by a certain time. You know what father said to do your certain chores before you go out. You know, they, they were the ones that like, kept us in line. They pointed the way. Well, Israel was chosen to point the way. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Amen. Amen. When many face of the world around Abraham's time believe in many gods, his own family, as a matter of fact, believe in idols and false gods. And God called them out. Come on here. Praise God. He had one thought and one thinking. There is but one in God. And he is the God of the universe. While people during his time was worshiping creation, Abraham knew that there was a God beyond creation. Hey, they created everything. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. And he let Abraham know, praise God, that he was going to bless him and his seed. Amen. In his time and in the time to come. Praise the Lamb of God. One thing he told him, amen, was that the Messiah, praise God, would come through his seed. Praise God. In his seed, all nations of the world will be blessed. Praise God. Amen. They had a responsibility of showing the light. Amen. And when we accept Christ, amen, we are engrafted spiritually through Christ 
and to Abraham's seed. Amen. We become that other olive branch, but we are one. We are one. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. To be used by God. Amen. Praise God. Amen. The Holy Spirit is leading you a different way. Praise God. But it's all right. Praise God. Amen. A lot of times in the Old Testament, they were to light candles as a form of representation of the presence of God, a communion with God. Amen. God communicated with them. Praise God. And reverencing God. Amen. Praise God. Amen. And here we find how the body of Christ, the church of God, is even represented in Revelation by candles. They say, what are you saying? We are the light of the world through Jesus Christ now. Amen. The engrafted soul. Amen. Praise God. No more Jew, no more Greek, praise God. But we are one. And you will find in, the, in these days and times that God is bringing believers from around the world, whether they, they were born, amen, Jewish or Gentile, they're bringing us together because we are the carriers of the gospel. We are the carriers of the fire. Praise God. We are the, the olive branches. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. Representing Jesus Christ in the earth. But they were like an older brother or an older sister to point up, you know, to point the earth to the way. Amen. And we find a cycle repeating itself, repeating itself over and over again. They say we're supposed to learn from history. Well, I guess we don't because humankind just repeats some things. Amen. When their leaders would pass away, they would go back some of them as far as to apostasy. Now, apostasy is a little deeper than backsliding. You got some people in apostasy state, they have allowed their enemy to actually steal their faith from them. That's right. Backsliding is a gradual process. That's why they say backsliding. Amen. When you start to leave God out of things, or you don't consider God, you don't reverence him in the way that you should reverence him. Amen. Say, come out from among them. You know all, the, all they're going to do. Amen. And you go around them. Now, some people say, well, somebody got a witness to them. True. But you have to know when and how to do it and be led by the Holy Spirit in doing that. Because if, if you don't maintain your faith and, and, and standing and what God has grounded you in, the enemy is so subtle. He's, he's very subtle. And he'll have you slipping into things. You say, oh, how did I do that? Where did I, you know? Amen. Praise God. That's his job. He's going to steal, kill, and destroy. And so you have them here with the children of Israel. And what they do? They joined up with their neighbors. They knew they were a called out people. They, their ancestors had seen the mighty move of God. They told them stories about the mighty move of God and how God constantly loved them and, and, and repented and, 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 and then took them back 
had mercy on them, had felt sorry for them, you know, and she delivered them from their enemies. They, they heard of those things over the years. But what happened? The enemy subtly, subtle, had them focusing and joining up with their neighbors. And that didn't please God. So what happened? God used their neighbors who they joined up with to vex them. Amen. Even Moses and Joshua said they would become like pricks in your eyes, thorns in your side. They were warned not to do that. How many times we have been warned not to do something? An enemy plays with our mind. Amen. Come on. He does that to each one of us. Amen. So oh, ain't going to be that bad or who's going to know or blah, blah, blah. Oh, God's grace will take you through it. And we trespass in areas that we should not trespass in. Come on here, somebody. Praise God. So what happened when they trespass, start worshiping the other gods, reverencing other gods? Amen. Praise God. And, and these were false gods, demonic gods. Praise the name of God. That made God angry. Come on here. Praise God. It's just like if you're a parent, God, amen, and you provided the best, amen, for your children, amen. Praise God. And they, praise God. Didn't listen to your advice, went another way. And you see they so slowly dying. See they so slowly killing themselves. Amen. Where their choices is have taken over them and leading them to destruction. You wouldn't like that. Well, God don't like it. He loves us so much. And he knows their enemy is subtle. Praise God. And that's why he gives us do's and don'ts. Amen. Because he knows in flesh there's no good thing. And if we tempt our flesh, praise God, we can yield to temptation. Temptation alone is not sin. It's when we yield to the things, amen, that allows us to trespass against the things of righteousness and holiness. Praise God. Amen. That Christ has taught. Amen. Praise God. And see, they get to the point where they don't have a conscience. This is what's happening in the world today. People do things. They, their minds have become so seared. Maybe at one time it bothered them. They get, they get to the place where they, they, their heart is like a callus, the Bible says. Where some things don't even bother them anymore. Don't even bother them anymore. And, and they could be in their sound mind. But what happened? The enemy has came and sift them. Sift their face. They sift their very testimony if you allow them to do it. Praise God. When you get to like a cold state. Amen. Praise God. Where things just don't bother you. Your conscience is seared. Praise God. Amen. And God will give you warnings. He'll give you warnings. As we often say, God don't leave us. We leave him. He said, I never leave you nor forsake you. Praise God. His love is unconditional, but he don't uphold sin. And sin has consequences. And so these same people that they're playing with, and the same people that they stop worshiping their gods, they turned on them. That's right. And then they begin to look up to God and cry out. So God used the enemy when they joined up with the enemy 
to bring them back to God. Amen. You know, sometimes we blame everything on the devil. When we open the door to the devil, praise God, that's one thing. Who knows the ways of God? There's sometimes God will move in such a way, sometimes we don't understand it, but he is to shake you up from where you are to get you to where you're supposed to be. And that's what he did with his, uh, with his children who was chosen by him, joined up with other faiths, amen, and abandoned, just abandoned him, amen. He allowed their enemies to vex them in a way to shake up their minds, shake up their minds. These people are not your friend. And the enemy tells us that a lot of the day. You know, some people act like they got a love ticket with the devil. Amen. The enemy don't like you. He hates humanity. That's right. You don't care how old you are, rich or poor, where you come from. Amen. He's after your, your soul. Praise God. He don't want you to yield to God. He wants you to yield to him. So he has different tactics of doing that. He just ain't going to walk up to you. I want to steal your soul. Life is short. Eternity is unmeasurable. You're spending eternity with Almighty God, the host of heaven. He ain't going to walk up to you and tell you, I want to steal, take that away from you. He's not going to tell you that. He's not going to tell you that you have eternal life, that you have the living source. That you have the power of Almighty God within you when you receive the uh, Holy Spirit and when you receive Jesus Christ. I ain't going to tell you that. But this is what he tried to steal from us. Our love, our devotion to Christ. Amen. And when we go on through a time like we're going through today, Sometimes we just got to take time to throw up our hands and start praising God. Thank you, God, for who he is. Thank you, God, for what he's done, what he's going to do, for what he's provided. Focus on who God is and who he made you through his son, Jesus Christ. And just quote a scripture. If it's just one scripture that God lays in your spirit, why? Well, that regenerates regenerates that seed in you that he has planted in you amen revive the spirit of God and in you amen iron to the chaplain's iron praise God why because what you see in the world today what you hear on the radio what you see on TV what you see on your cell phone praise God these are all things to overwhelm you with your experience in your life with your family with your health with your finances, with your education, with your career. These things, if you are not rooted and grounded in the promises of God, amen, and knowing who you are, praise God in God, and that you are able to be more than a conqueror, Romans 837 tells us. If you don't constantly refresh and restore your mind, the enemy will come in. He come into the best of those. Amen. Who know the word of God from A to Z. Praise God. Anyone can be attacked by life's circumstances, life challenges. That's why we're supposed to pray one for another. Glory be to God. Amen. So what did God do? God raised up leaders, judges. Praise God. Amen. To pray for the people of Israel. To give them advice, to see what does says the Lord, because they lost their way to point them back to that light. And we are supposed to be that light to anyone who you find is backsliding. Amen. Sometimes people have trauma come in their life. Come on here, somebody. It can knock them off their feet so much. That is the time that we're supposed to draw closer to God. 
But the enemy come with his ants. Oh, if God loved you, this would have never happened. And this and that. And oh, look who's leaving. No, this is the time that you grab a hold of Christ because he's right there waiting for you to cast your cares upon him. It's a walk. It's a journey. It's a profit, proper process. Amen. And I'm not going to take you as easy all the time. But you have the ability to come out victorious. God has already made that possible through his son, Jesus Christ. You have the host of heaven with you. The Holy Spirit is within you. Praise God. Amen. He will guide you and lead you and comfort you at that time. Nobody can comfort you like the Holy Spirit. No one. No one. Way in the midnight hour, he'll comfort you. He'll say things to you that only you and him can talk about, know about. Praise God. Amen. We're going to have challenges in this life. Job said, man, born a woman is full of trouble. But we don't listen to the enemy and trespass and go on the other side. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. And so we thank God for the judges that he raised up. And even some people, while they had judges, they didn't do right. Praise God. But they were there to point you in the right direction. And God got spiritual judges in the earth today. Five-fold ministry in the earth today. Amen. He got interceders in the earth today. Prayer warriors. Come on here, somebody. In the earth today. Amen. And you, you get to listen to them when they point you back to the word of God and bring encouragement. Praise God. Because the greatest thing the enemy uses is discouragement. Things don't work out the way you think. Things don't move as fast as you think. Amen. And you're putting your whole heart and soul into some things. The enemy would come, amen, with a spirit of discouragement. Amen. And would vex you, praise God. That's the time you got to ask Jehovah, say, Lord, Lord, give me peace in this. Give me patience in this. Amen. Give me long suffering. Somebody said, do you really know what you're praying for? <laughs> Amen. Like that song we used to sing years ago, to be like Jesus, oh, I want to be like him. That takes a lot. You really got to step out the flesh. Hey, hey. Really got to fall in love with Jesus, with the things that you face in the world today, with the things you go through with people. Amen. And it, 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 it is forces of darkness. Amen. You have to understand. So many times we get angry with people. Amen. You have to understand there's a spirit behind that. Amen. Don't, don't fall out with the person. Pray against whatever spirit. Amen. It is controlling that person. Praise God. Rebellious spirit. Whatever spirit it is. Amen. Praise God. Controlling spirit. Blessings. Amen. You have to know for yourself. Praise God. Amen. You pray against the spirit. You, you don't grow hatred against the person. And that, that's, that's the trick that the enemy uses. Glory be to God. Amen. Praise God. Because we're going to have challenges in this world. Whether you're saved, whether you're unsaved, you're going to have challenges. And as you said, the greatest, the greatest problem that we have in this world, one of the strongest tools the enemy uses is discouragement. Discourage, and, it, and it attacks all of us. It attacks all of us. So God raised up these judges in Israel to point the people back to the truth that they are supposed to be a light in the earth. Amen. Amen. And they were supposed to live a certain way. They weren't supposed to worship false deities and align themselves with the people of sin. 
Amen. Amen. And we find the same thing today. The same thing today. People slide unintentionally sometimes into the traps of Satan. Amen. And to what the world has to offer. Praise God. Instead of consulting God first. Father, how do you want me to handle this? Praise God. Is this your way or is this a, a trap of the enemy? And we have to talk to God just like that because we don't know everything. But he knows everything. Praise God. Amen. And so we have to open ourselves to him. Where we fall short at. Amen. Praise God. And realize that without God, we are nothing. We are nothing. Amen. Amen. Our topic today was a backsliding people. How people repeatedly do things in history that create the same problems over and over again. And we found that Israel was creating the same problems over and over again that their ancestors did. When they turned away from God and joined up and aligned with their enemies, God used those enemies to vex them. Amen. Amen. As Moses and Joshua told them, they will become pricks in your eyes and thorns in your side. God used those very enemies to shake them up, to bring them back to the position that they were supposed to be in. So much we had already covered, praise God. But they were chosen to be a light to the earth. As an older son or daughter, how that older son or daughter points us sometimes, they like a second parent. Amen. Israel was supposed to be like a big brother, a big sister. Amen. Praise God. Amen. But when Christ came, that olive branch, we were engrafted into Abraham's seed. We are one in the spirit. We are one in the spirit. And that's why he's bringing believers from around the world into one body. We're getting stronger now. Why? Because the opposition against the body of Christ is getting stronger. Ain't no shame in what they do. They get, they get, they go on TV, amen, and orchestrate satanic worship. Ain't no shame in what they do now. Amen. Teaching young kids all kinds of things. So we come in opposition from all sides now. Amen. People in certain countries that God bless the missionaries and different people that go to certain countries where Christianity is not even sometimes fully accepted or not accepted at all. But they're doing the work for Christ because they've been called to do that. Praise God. But we must stand. We must not entangle ourselves and we can only do that by keeping ourselves before God Amen. as we said earlier singing that song falling in love with Jesus mm. we have to fall deeper and deeper in love with him he don't leave us we leave him Amen. his love for us is unconditional hey I thank God for Jesus. Hallelujah. Because he looked beyond my fault, my shortcoming, and saw our need. Amen. Amen. And just like, as we said before, these deliverers that was raised up to point people back to the way, mm. God uses us to help each other in prayer and words of encouragement and enlightenment. Praise God. When somebody is going through hard times or, or going through a trauma, 
Amen. Or maybe they slipped and fell spiritually. That's not the time to bash them. That's not the time to put your foot on them. That's the time of reconciliation. Point them back to God. See, the enemy will have us to be in a, in a state of immaturity. Where you talk about people and gossip and spread discord. Proverbs 16 say that's an abomination to God. Amen. Praise God. We talk about this sin and that sin. The Bible tells us he don't like that. Praise God. We can kill people with our tongue. Praise God. Praise God. And God wants us also, not just the fivefold ministry, but the prayer warrior, the believer in Christ, that believe in the power of God, the transformation power of God, the love of God, to reach out and touch somebody's head. Make this world a better place if you can. Can't help everybody. But you can do your part to the best of your ability. And God will honor you for that. Israel's painful consequences, number two. When the people turned away from God, they turned to idols. Mm. They tried to replace the Almighty God with mere clay and stone figurines. Now you know that's a shame. Mm -hmm. God is extremely patient with his children when they sin and stand ready to forgive. During the time of the judges though, the people had sinned too many times that they supposed repentance rang hollow. God was angry. The people had broken their covenant with them. Because the people had disobeyed him, God declared that he would not protect them against their enemies anymore. And if as he had gone before them, driven out the enemies, without him, success was not possible. God used unbelievers, pagan people, who did not even know him, to test his people. His plan was that Israel's suffering would eventually cause them to call on him for help. God would use painful circumstances to help us see our need for him. When we trust to our own devices, we find that we will fail and caught further misery. By his grace, God uses various ways to bring change into our lives. Too often, when our lives are going well, we forget all about God, thinking we do not need Him. The truth is that we need Him all the time. We need Him for every breath we take. Amen. Praise God. As we said before, Wrong choices, yielding to temptation, it all has consequences. God forgives us, he gives us opportunities, amen. But when we open the door to the enemy, it has consequences, amen. amen. Penalties, praise God. So, we ask God to keep us on the right path, that we won't open the door for the enemy to come in, because he don't love humanity. He don't love none of us. He may be thinking he cares for you, and he promised you things too. He showed you good things, the pleasures of this life. Amen, the lust of the eyes. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Praise God. God wants us to be on guard. Mm -hmm. Pride of life. Praise God. He wants us to have the best. Yeah. But he wants us to put him first and to do it in a righteous manner. Praise God. Praise God. We must 
Remember, who we are tied to, we must have a thirst, keep a thirst after God. Seek his face as never before, because we are facing opposition as never before. Spiritual weaknesses in high places, principalities, but God has given us power through Jesus Christ mm. over all these things. So much is going on in the world today, even in politics, mm. even in our laws, yeah. and in his workers of iniquity, workers of darkness. And sometimes we don't even see it how it pulls us away from the foundation of our faith. Praise God. It's so subtle. Amen. Mm -hmm. And we must stay alert. Amen. We have to be watchmen on the walls. Right. Amen. Because the enemy is coming to capture. He don't care, as we said before, how old you are. He don't care how educated you are. Amen. He don't care whether you're male or female, mm -hmm. what part of the world you came from. He don't care if you're a millionaire or don't have no money <laughs> at all. He's apt to capture your soul. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Praise Amen. And sometimes he even made bargains with people. But on the end of that bargain, you're a loser. First of all, you're making a deal with a loser. Praise God. So what does it matter if a person gain the whole world and lose their soul? Amen. Amen. Israel backsliding. Amen. The backsliding candidate. Something we just keep slipping, keep slipping, keep sliding. Don't happen overnight. It's a process. And the biggest process is in our minds. Amen. 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 We don't want to be a backsliding people. We're going to go quickly to your practical points. We too easily forget what the Lord has saved us from and get caught up in the wrong things. Judges 2, verses 16 to 17. God does not enjoy having to chasten his people, and we're delivered in as soon as possible. Verse 18, 3. Without someone to hold us accountable, it is easy to lapse into sin. Verses 19, 4. We should not expect God's help in overcoming difficulties when we are living in disobedience to him. Verses 20 to 21. Five, trials and obstacles are often what we need to help us stay faithful. Verses 22 to 23. Amen. We thank God for Jesus. Yes. Amen. Talking about a backsliding people. Ever before, we need the Lord today to stay on God, to stay faithful, praise God, to stay focused when there's so much opposition and deceitful, I say deceitful distractions, amen, to take us from our very faith, our very testimony, praise God. We like to make some announcements, amen. Tuesday and Thursdays are our consecration and fast days, Amen. Communion first Saturday. Amen. And our holy congregation is coming up. November 2nd through the 4th. Amen. Amen. Praise God. November 2nd. Yours truly. Amen. Will be honored. Amen. Our guest preacher will be Pastor Joyce Cooper. Amen. Divine Guidance Faith Tabernacle. Amen. Praise God. She be speaking. Amen. For that general mother honoration. Friday, November 3rd at 7.30 p.m. Right here. Audience service at 11206 Farmers Boulevard. Our guest preacher will be our first prelate, Pastor Paul Smith. 
Amen. Of Pastor International Ministries, as many of you know, follow him on Facebook. Amen. He spent a lot of time in Africa Amen. preaching the word, praying for the sick. Come on here. Amen. Praise God. Pointing people in the ways of Christ. Well, he'll be our speaker Friday night at 7.30 p.m. Saturday, amen. Now it's closing out day. We'll be at 5 p.m. 5 p.m. Our guest preacher will be overseer Coriel Smith, the Citadel Light and Deliverance Incorporated, amen. The Pavilion of Prayer Power Consultorium from the Bronx, New York. Praise God, and we have candidates, amen, for installation, amen, and ordination, amen, on that day. Amen. Praise God, you are invited to come out and play a part, praise God. We give God all the glory, amen. amen. Maybe you do not know Jesus in the pardon of your sins, amen. Maybe you feel that you're not where you would like to be. We open this invitation to you, amen, to accept Jesus as your choice. Just by saying, Lord Jesus, I believe you died for my sins. I accept you as my savior. Your blood has washed away my sins. And I ask you, oh God, to help me to be a disciple of your word and not a hearer only. Father God, help me to be the light in the earth and to fulfill the purpose you have for my life in the name of Jesus. And I thank you, Father God, for writing my name in the Lamb's book of life. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Praise God. Praise if you God. have made that decision today, you might say, well, that's a simple prayer. I don't feel no different. Well, it's not by feelings. Praise God. Amen. It's by you accepting and believing. Praise Amen. God. According to the word of God. Mm. You are a new creature. First Corinthians 7 lets us know. And 15. In Christ Jesus, the spirit of God has been regenerated in you. Amen. And you grow. Amen. And you be around as the Holy Spirit leads you to people of God that will accept you and love you and nourish you with his word. Amen. Praise Amen. God. Praise and God. we thank God. If you like to write for us for prayer or follow up, you may do that at Royal Generation. Amen. Worldwide. Amen. At G mail.com praise God praise God praise thank God. you Jesus thank and you. we give God all the glory amen even for this rainy day in New York <laughs> we give God all the glory praise God hallelujah to the Lamb of God amen, amen. praise amen. God praise Father God we thank you praise God those of you who are led you may Donate to Dollar Sign Solid Rock 0502. Mm. Amen. Amen. Uh, to Church Outreach, Dollar Sign Churches 0707. Mm. Father God, we thank you for all that has been said and done. We ask in the mighty name of Jesus, mm. oh God, that you lift up everyone. Mm. We ask that you lift up the host pastor, Bishop Dillard, right now. Strengthen them in Jesus' name. Restore in the mighty name of Jesus. Father God, everyone under the sound of our voice, God, yes. encourage them today. Father, give us a new thrive, God, to walk upright before you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Yes. And we thank you right now. Yes. Amen. Amen. On Christ's solid rock I stand. All of the ground is seeking sand. All of the ground is seeking sand. And we're going to take a station identification. Yeah. Amen. For about five minutes and then we would join in 
We have a young man, Brother Jeremy, going to break the bread of life to us today. Amen, amen. Praise God. We thank amen. God. Amen for amen. our sister Evelyn Dunn. Praise God. And Brother Terrence, praise God. We thank God for the Holy Spirit. Amen. amen. Thank God for Pastor Robinson. Praise God. Amen. And for amen. the glorious presence of God. Amen. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all on the ground. 